Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and obviously in the lead up to the general election and indeed for the whole of this year, people have been looking at polls and, and asking themselves, oh, you know, is this what would happen were there to be a general election? Is this giving us a good account of how the general election is likely to go? Well, now we've had the general election, we are in a position to be able to look at the polls and say, were they accurate or were they not? But first, if you want to watch more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I've said this a few times before, if you've been watching the channel on the issue of polls, the main problem is that a lot of people, um, quite understandably, do not necessarily understand what they're reading. Polls are effectively uh, statistics. And it's, it, it's quite odd to me that people all over the place, when it comes to a little bit of maths, we go, oh no, I'm not very good at maths. Well, a lot of people aren't, they don't practice, and that's fine, and they're quite happy admitting that. But when it comes to a poll, you have to add, you know, statistics is not the easiest form of maths. And if people are just generally not that great at maths, they're probably not that great at polls. But in actual fact, the poll results were pretty good. Here's the caveat though. What's, where a lot of people go wrong and where a lot of people assume that the polls are wrong is because they look at a poll and they go, oh, this is gonna be the result. And then the election happens and it's nothing like that. And they go, well, the polls are rubbish. And the reason is this. There are lots of polls, there are lots of polling companies, and people tend to gravitate towards the polls that give them the results they would most like to see. And then of course, it turns out that they're inaccurate. Oh, shock, horror. And then they think polls are rubbish. No, not so. And this is why throughout the last few months, I've been saying, the one I mostly look at is YouGov. Ipso Mori, decent as well, but their methodology, their methodology in terms of analyzing the data is very good. The way they collect the data, I don't think is as fit. And it's because they, they collect their data face to face. And it used to be the only way to do it. Um, I have, a, ever since the 1992 general election, I have a problem. The reason polling did get it very badly wrong then. And the reason was that a lot of people were saying they were gonna vote Labour and then actually voted Conservatives, not because they changed their mind. It was called the spiral of silence at the time. In other words, it was embarrassing to admit that you were gonna vote for the Conservative Party, but they didn't really trust Labour. Doesn't that sound like very recently, does it? Anyway, that was the, that was the situation there. So I would prefer polling that was more anonymous and that's where you go come in. Now people go, oh, it's owned by conservatives. Um, yes, it is. All polling companies are private businesses. A lot of them are owned by conservatives. And I'm not saying look at any YouGov poll and take it as accurate. You've got to bear in mind, they take as private companies, they get commissions and those commissions are not always to find out the truth. Sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time, people commission a polling company specifically because they want to present what they would like the truth to be, to say, oh, so many people are in favor of this thing when they're not at all. But when it comes to the voting intention trackers, they're not commissioned in the same way. These are the shop window for YouGov. It's in their interest that it be accurate. So let's have a look at how it did. So first of all, I'm going to have a, a little look at the share of the vote here. Now, the share of the vote is much more straightforward when we use first past the post to predict than um, the number of seats that are going to be gained. So what we can see here is this was the prediction. And obviously, this changed a little. You'll notice it didn't change very much over the campaign. And, and that's the thing. A lot of people don't really change their minds that much during a campaign. They may on the day itself and they may before the campaign starts, but not so much during it. Uh, the Conservatives, the prediction was that they would get 43% of the vote. They got 43.6%. That's, so that's pretty good. That's 1% off, well within. And, and you've got to remember, there's always an error on these things. Of course, there's always an error on these things. Um, Labour were predicted to get 34%. They got less than that on 32.1%. Um, and, and both of those are way below what they got in 2017. The SNP were predicted to get 3%. They did better on 3.9%, which proportionally is quite a bit better. The Liberal Democrats predicted to get 12%, 11.5%. Uh, well, if you round it off, that is 12%. So that's pretty close. So the share of the vote, uh, YouGov's predictions were pretty bang on. What that suggests is that their methodology for judging how a whole nation is going to vote in this sort of thing is bang on. And it is the reason why I've banged the drum for these guys, or so to speak, or said that they're the ones I mostly use, is because 
I have observed this, not just because of, I've read the methodology they use, but because I've observed them in past elections. And you know what? They're bang on. They're always pretty close, within a reasonable source of error. Now, bear in mind, when you've got a very tight election, then a small error can yield wildly different results. But in terms of the share of the vote, what we can see there, I was hoping, and I've said this before, the only thing, so when I was looking at these polls, and I, was, I knew that these polls were accurate. I knew they were. So, but I also knew there was a significant error in potentially first-time voters, which were difficult to quantify. In the end, it turns out that that didn't happen. But more about that, there's going to be loads of videos in the general election. Now, when it comes to seats, much, much more difficult. You cannot just translate vote share into seats because, as something I'm going to point out in a bit, if you look at this, look at the actual share of the vote. Conservatives, 43.6%. Labour, 32.1%. Now, skip ahead the SNP. Sorry about that. I'll come back. Um, and the Liberal Democrats, 11.5%. That is a very curious set of numbers. Let us add up 32.1% and 11.5%. What do we get? 43.6%. Labour plus the Liberal Democrats got exactly to 0.1%, the same number of votes as the Conservatives throughout the country in this general election. Level pegging. In terms of the number of people that went to the polls, Exactly the same number voted Labour or Liberal Democrat as voted Conservative. Conservative ended up with way more seats, massive majority. How is that? First past the post. First past the post is very tricky. You, what the Conservatives have effectively done, and the polls did predict this, is won a load of seats by a small margin. If just a few hundred people here or there had have gone out and voted either Labour or Liberal Democrat, whatever, that majority would have been gone. And that's all it needed. That's all it needed. And that's not what happened. So in terms of the vote share, so the MRP uh, that YouGov did to try and predict the number of seats, this is not going to be as accurate, but it's not actually bad. They've used it before. It's not bad. So what we can see here is they predicted the Conservatives would get 339 seats. They got significantly more at 365. But remember, because they were also predicting a load of seats to go on small margins, in actual fact, um, within the source of error, although it doesn't look like it, it looks like a large error in terms of seats, in terms of, you know, were they getting their methodology wrong? No, they weren't. There were a load of seats, remember, that were always going to be very, very close. And more of them went to the Conservatives on the day than went to Labour or the Liberal Democrats, is what they're saying. But nonetheless, they were predicting a handsome Conservative majority. They got a bloody big one. But they were... Labour, they predicted 231. It ended up being 203. I'm going to come to that as well. SNP 41, they actually did better on 48, and Liberal Democrats 15, they didn't do as well on 11. And although that looks like the, the smallest difference, proportionally, of course, it's not because, you know, there's a significant number of seats fewer when you consider the total number of seats there. Um, so the MRP wasn't as bad. It was actually really, really close in the last election, 2017. It was not as close this time, but that is because, as I say, there were a lot more very tight marginals in this election than there were last time. You know, as I pointed out with the Conservatives getting exactly the same number of votes as Lib Dems and Labour. And that's important to point out as well. So what I said is Labour plus Liberal Democrats got 214 seats, but they got the same number of votes as the Conservatives on 365 seats. That is wildly, the Conservatives have got wildly out of proportion number of seats compared to the share of the vote massively so and that is what made the MRP in the end impossible to get accurately and that's why I, I said beforehand I felt a little bit sorry for them because they've done a stunning job of producing really accurate that a statistician will look at and go and, and will know have produced a really good model but that model you always got some error on it and that even a small error on it you know when you're talking about in a constituency people winning seats by a couple of hundred you know, um, it can easily swing. And in, and it, it can easily swing. You've got to remember that the final MRP results were based before the last day of, of campaigning, really. That final day when you know, all the parties know people will decide on the day itself. A lot of people decide, millions, it's quite surprising, decide on the day itself. So those that last little push can make all the difference. Who was most effective? Obviously, the Conservatives were the most effective there. Um, so that's how they did, I'm going to say 
that they did a stunning job and it was pretty good. And I'm going to say this, and this is why when I look at the YouGov polls, specifically for voting intention, I do say that it's, it's as accurate as you are going to get. Um, and it, it proves itself every time, uh, every time. And the... Um, and that's why looking ahead to on my channel, when I look ahead to future elections, including the local elections, if I'm going to look at polling, I'm going to mostly look at YouGov because it does prove itself. The others don't. And if you've been looking at polls and, and seen that it's, it's a complete shambles compared to the actual election results, that's because most polls are. And, it, and some people think, you know, like the Guardian paper, for example, does the poll of polls where it compares all of them and equ weights them equally. The problem is there you're doubling down on all the bad polls, which is most of them. So a couple of other little bits just to finish off then. So we've already talked about the first past the post nonsense here. Boris Johnson will behave as if he's got a mandate when he got the same number of votes as parties, uh, as the two main parties that could have formed a coalition against him. They wouldn't have done, but you know. Um, but in terms of total number of votes for his Brexit, here's where it's another nonsense. And it's actually quite a cruel bit of nonsense here. So the Conservatives, obviously, a vote for the Conservatives was a vote for their Brexit. A vote for the Brexit Party was a vote for their Brexit. A vote for UKIP was a vote for that Brexit um, in Northern Ireland, DUP and so on. If you are, but all the other parties were voting for another referendum. We want to stop this one, another referendum. If you add up the total number of votes for people voting for a party that wanted another referendum and those voting for a party that didn't, so the Brexit side and the Remain side, should we say. Now, just to, because some people may have forgotten, in the original Brexit, well, the 2016 Brexit referendum, 52% voted in favour of Brexit, 48% against. This time round, it's cruel, this. 52% in the general election voted in favour of parties that want another referendum. 48% in favour of parties that don't. Vicious, isn't it? It's absolutely vicious. Cruel, really. Terribly cruel. But anyway, there we go. Um, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then also please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.